Good evening. I'd like to open the Deerfield Planning Board meeting June 25th, 2019 at 7 p.m. at the Deerfield Town offices. Uh, agenda for tonight is uh, potentially look at minutes from previous meetings, uh, review mail, take some public comment, and then we have a continuation of a public hearing, a site plan review for 141 Greenfield Road, which was continued from the June 3rd meeting, and it's a proposal to an addition, uh, add an addition to the Animal Hospital. Then under new business, we have a public hearing, uh, proposed amendments to the floodplain district zoning bylaw to clarify uses that are permitted, prohibited, or permitted by special per permit in the floodplain district. We have an a and R for 34 Stillwater Road, which is to split a lot into two lots. Then we'll take up any business not reasonably anticipated 48 hours prior to the posting of this meeting. We'll set a date for the next meeting and adjourn. Oh, it'd be nice to have seen them before tonight. Any, um, yeah, it does seem really quiet. Mm -hmm. Any additions or subtractions from this agenda? I, if someone could help me, at our, we had a, uh, a meeting a joint meeting with the select board and the planning board. It seemed like there was something at the end of that, that that we said we had to discuss at this meeting, wasn't there? I don't know. All right, so if we can't think of anything, maybe we'll think of something during the meeting. Do you have any minute? Do you have any notes of that? No, I just have them from the third. Yeah, I'll look at my notes during the meeting. All right. Um, Paul Ellis uh, told us he wouldn't be able to be here. Um, and he, we don't have minutes from the last meeting, unfortunately. Um, Rachel will probably review the mail, and we can get to that at the end. Is there any public comment? Does anybody have anything to say that's not on the um, agenda tonight? Any quick comment from anybody in the public? Hearing none, we'll start with the old business, which is a continuation of our site plan review for 141 Greenfield Road. Are you 141 Greenfield Road? Yeah. I would like to open the uh, continuation of the public hearing by reading the notice that was uh, uh, in the paper back in March, actually, is when it started. The Deerfield Planning Board will hold a public hearing on June 25th, 7 o'clock in the Deerfield offices, uh, to act in compliance with the zoning, town zoning bylaws section 5400 on a site plan review application submitted by MIB Construction and Custom Cabinetry on behalf of Stormaster Funding, LLC, for a proposed 2,560 square foot addition to the VESH building, a veterinary facility located at 141 Greenfield Road. Uh, copies of the proposed project application have been available at the town offices during normal business hours. Any person interested in wishing to be heard should appear at the time and place designated. So, at the last um, hearing, we, we had a um, peer review person, and we had uh, the VESH folks, and they were going to get together, and there has been a lot of um, communication back and forth. So you want to give us an update and tell us certainly who you are and what yes. you're doing? And um, my name is Meredith Savage. I'm with SWCA, and we are representative of the applicant. And um, you will have to forgive me. I am, uh, or I hope you'll forgive me, please. Um, I'm a last minute addition. We had the person who typically would have been here tonight was unable to make it. So you'll, if you Which could is Kevin tell me. Kevin McCaffrey, that's Kevin. who, okay. so we all remember we heard from Kevin yeah. right. last meeting. So, so just, if you could talk right there. okay. Certainly. So if I'm repeating anything that you've, information that you've already got, just tell me to hush and I'll. <laughs> um, the, there were uh, some corrections. I think that you have the response to the peer review, and if not, I can go over it. Um, the peer reviewer basically caught some discrepancies in our, did I, I haven't signed no. yet. Yeah, okay. So I will. Yep. Um, uh, caught some discrepancies in the site uh, plan application 
and we've uh, made a few changes um, on the site plan as well. So actually, if you could just slow down for a second here. Certainly. Because I think... I'm still buzzing. I, I drove in from Hyannis, and I just made it with two minutes to spare. So it's... Uh, yeah, but... I still have road noise in my head. I have some letters, but... Um. <clears throat> I believe. So, do we have the updated? I think so. We it's uh, yeah. dated June 18, and it was sent in. I think either yesterday or the day before. So um, it would have been a response, a letter, um, and an updated narrative. <clears throat> There, that's the updated plan. March Site 13th, plan this is stamped. Oops, well then it is not. Um, this one is Greg. 524. Yeah, Greg is not um, even. So you got, you got all the updated plans. Um, so Greg is, our, Greg is our peer reviewer. Oh, great. And you sent a letter dated like a couple days ago, Yes. right? that was um, in response to their June 18th. Correct. So actually I would, it would be really sweet if we had that and, yep. and we don't, huh? And we don't. How come we don't? It's not Did copied, you? I don't have a copy of it. I've got it on my um, I had some back and forth with Priscilla, I thought. <laughs> it's gonna be in here. Do you have any copies of your letter? <laughs> Because it would really, it was a good. Um, it would help. It was a good summary. Made me feel. You good. need the the June 18 letter. Mm -hmm. uh, I can I can certainly give you this. Um, well, if I give you this copy, then I uh, <laughs> won't have anything to refer to. We have your. I have your June 18. Okay, one. great. When was yours dated? Your response to theirs. Uh, I think it's the last Thursday. Because uh, um. Anybody have it? No. Because well, basically, can... our, he was saying that they covered everything. Yeah. So I kind of want to cut to the chase to some of this. There's a couple issues we might want to talk about, but a lot of it we right. we don't need to. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Here, here it is. All right. So I, I have it actually clipped to this. So. Um, oh, good. So on June 8, on um, June 20th. Um, Uh, Greg Henson from our from the Berkshire Design Group um, w w sent a letter, basically saying that your um, June eighteenth covered all the things that we were looking for. Excellent. Okay. So maybe we can highlight some of them for everybody. Sure. The um, I think one of the the main discrepancies was that we had erroneously. Uh, put the size of the building as to, or the addition as 2,560 square feet, and the corrected um, square footage is 3,200 square feet. Um, and so there were a couple places that that was, and those were corrected. Um, and there were a few other Scribner errors that we uh, corrected. Um, and um, it's one of them was uh, pedestrian safety will be maintained on the site and egress. You know, there's no pedestrian egress from the site as, as was, and so that was changed on the plan also. Um, in effect is that what is happening, this is the second part of phase two and um, we have an addition that's going on to the building it's not other than the fact that the building is, is being enlarged by the, um, by the addition. It's not substantively changing the viewscape. Um, it's within character of the original building. Um, it is not affecting pedestrian or vehicle circulation. Um, and uh, I think this isn't to me. Oh, my apologies. Um, and the uh, the stormwater um, 
the hydrology on the site will be increased slightly as you would expect with the addition of the building, but that's being directed into um, the stormwater facilities that are on site. And um, let's see, and I'll just read from this. Um, the two models were uh, for the stormwater were review were revised, um, and it uh, it just um, provides the routing details of the detention um, basin outlets. And um, there is also. Um, one of the things that the peer reviewer bro uh, brought up was a discrepancy in the hydrocad or the hydrology calculations, um, and there was an unaccounted for 750 square feet, and that difference or that 750 square feet accounts for um, an earlier phased addition, and um, the hydrology accounts for the entire roof area of the of the um, of the building the full building and it's now being and it's routed to the detention basin um, which is in, down in here um, and these revised plans I think um, have corrected, uh, have the, the correct square footage on them. All right. And I think some people on the planning board remember there was some, I think it was paving and some other things that were done. Without uh, review. I, I believe didn't come for site plan review a few years ago. And um, so all the new calculations are based on the actual covered all the covered right uh, all the impervious per, services. all the impervious services now um, so it kind of a little bit of makeup I think so. and I think that is it it is also corrected the fact that um, it erroneously stated in here uh, someone flipped it um, in terms of, uh, for the uh, Conservation Commission, they said a positive determination was issued and it, they probably had a dyslexic moment and that was supposed to be a negative determination. Okay. The entire project, or I mean the, the project will be um, within the buffer only and the Conservation Commission issued a negative determination on impact. All right, Greg, can you just maybe just come up and just kind of give a quick review of, yeah, just if you could speak into the microphone there. Nice and actually, um, I can't find it. I don't have it. Any chance someone wants to take um, yeah, notes. minutes? Fine. I'm just terrible at it. I got it. I got it. I'm on it. Here I am. Right here. Yeah. Meh. I'd say vice chair. Yeah, 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 yeah. How fast can you type? Very, very fast. <laughs> And then we have the backup. You can just refer to the backup documents, which I'll give you. So, so yeah. So there was a um, the original submission. Uh, Berkshire Design Group on June third sent a letter um, to S. W S W C A. You guys have one letter. Who then on the eighteenth responded, and then. Greg has a letter from the 20th. You, you, you maybe just highlight <coughs> your findings the, the, for us. The, the 20th letter, which I don't have a copy of. Oh, I no. do have a copy of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but oh, my findings that. basically were that uh, in comparison with uh, pre-development, which was when there was nothing built on the site, versus the, the, the second go around, um, the stormwater uh, peak flows reduced uh, to, to the control point, which is the stream. The way that happened was when, when we design things, uh, we have a factor of safety. We don't, we don't build out to the maximum uh, flow rate of the pre-development. So they designed the whole build-out site into this detention basin, which had excess capacity. And they also did not 
they did not exceed the pre-development runoff from the site. So even with, with the new addition, they, they, they were still below the pre-development numbers as far as runoff to the stream, which is impacts to the downstream properties. So uh, there is no adverse impact to the downstream properties over when it was not developed at all. As far as the detention basin goes, because of the addition, they, they're not uh, running the stormwater from the addition into any like uh, mitigation except for the detention basin. So that, that is uh, by default going to increase. It still contains the two year through the 25 year storm. Um, it overtops the spillway in the 50 and 100 year storm, which it did before, which it does now. Uh, before this addition is put on, but it'll only increase the 50-year uh, storm by three quarters of an inch, and the 100-year storm by less than an inch. And e even with that taken into account, the control point, which is a stream again, still has less of a uh, flow than it did before any development. And that's basically what I, what I've found in my review. It's kind of remarkable. That's what we like to hear for stormwater. Then. That is remarkable. Mm. <laughs> it's better than it was. Right. Because the stormwater detention basin is uh, doing its job. Good job. It's Any, not better than it is now, but, but it's still under what it was. What it was. Before he, okay. Yeah. So yeah. I make that clear. Yep. Any questions, comments from public? Questions, comments from planning board members? No. So there is a, um, so we do need the new. Um, I can leave you uh, site plan this review. copy. All right. That is the revised edition. So is that? And would you just, like the full plan set as well? Yes, well, yes. Um, and so we need to, in our decision, put all the dates and revised dates and everything and things. Yeah. So. Um, but, but there should have also been submissions to the town hall, and we should have got stamped copies, so I'm not sure what, you, you don't know about that, huh? I am really, I apologize again. This was, as I said, this was so yeah. last minute that I did not have a chance to. All right, well, you can tell Kevin we'll be looking for them. And uh, okay, so w we need to bring another one by and get it stamped, uh, the revised edition of both the plan set and this and get it stamped by the town clerk. Yes. So I'll we need at least Kevin to come by. I mean it's, we always go back and forth, but at least two or three of these copies. Um, planning board and then the building inspector. Who's then because the next step is that the building inspector will look at this plan to make sure it's built to the plan. Maybe a better thing would be for us to get those copies run off and bring everything by tomorrow in one yeah. group and just leave them with the town clerk? Yep. So you'd like how many of the site plan review and how many of the plans? Three? I think Is we have the electronic copy and then two physical copies. That two? way the planning board can keep one and the building inspector gets one and then an electronic one in case someone else needs Okay, one. and two And the same with the plans. plan. Yeah. Got it, we will make yeah. sure those come by tomorrow. That seems satisfactory. Thank you. And it looks like um, we, we did get a check. I'm not always sure how we determine the. Uh, oh, that should be a copy. Should be in here if you got a amounts, check. But, um, Typically. Oh, okay. There was the fee, and then there was the fee for the um, peer review. That's what this is. All right. So we're good. Okay. She said 3,200. Did you say the re revised uh, footprint of the addition was 3,200? The revised, yes, 3,200 square feet. Yeah, because <clears throat> yeah, um, the fee is based on disturbed land and it was two, $256. That might have been based on the other 
Yeah. So number. does it sound like we're lacking and we need yeah. to provide a little more money? So the, oh. so, yeah, okay, that's where the, the 256 came from, what it said. So then it's the difference between 320 and 256. Is that what you're doing? Well, what is, isn't the fee um, $10 per thousand? All right, so yeah, let's work that out with the town clerk and um, <coughs> trying to think Priscilla's in on Wednesdays, you know? She is. She was here today. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I got some emails. Um, so also Priscilla in the zoning office. Okay. She'll and calculate Kevin's, the Kevin's, I think, worked with her before, too. So yeah, she, she should be able to, and I'll try to communicate with her okay. why the difference here, too. Oh, actually, yeah, that would be good. So I should probably give her, one of us will give her a call ahead of time so yeah. we can bring the, the yeah. check. Otherwise, I think all the other site plan review things, it's all just an addition to the well, existing building. Actually, what we'll do... I don't think we had any issues. Um, ...is... Since we're going to be giving you a revised copy, we'll go ahead and put your final letter in here too. And then you'll have it all that'd together. Yep, that'd be great. Okay. Well, no, that, no. I thought you, that's already dated, isn't it? Isn't that? It's just dated June 2019. Doesn't matter. Oh, yes, right. this letter is dated June 18th. I was just saying we could also add in yeah. his reply all right. on top of it's it. All in one place. That's good. Okay. All right. right, if there's nothing else, then we would need a uh, motion to close the he public hearing. I make a motion to close the public hearing. I'll second it. Any discussion? All those in favor of closing the public hearing, aye. 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 Opposed to abstain. Six zero zero. I'm almost there. <laughs> Just kidding. Keep typing. Um, all right, so actually Priscilla was very uh, smart and actually wrote up a quick site plan review decision in case we were able to decide on this tonight. Um, we would need to fill in some, some dates and things. Um, but the main document is the date of the plan, which was March 5th was the original, and then whatever the revised one ends up being, which is today, I guess, or something. Um, and then the accompanying documents is the um, is this is the plan itself. Also, this. No? Do we need that? That's not for that. Well, no. We wrote up. Uh, we got this written up. So yeah, so it'll be fine. And we have a signature page. So is there any discussion or does anyone want to make a motion um, to approve the plan for an addition to the veterinary emergency and specialty hospital? I'll make that motion to approve the site plan as um, it's been re revised. I'll second it. Any discussion? So if we put in the new dates, um, which will be, what? You, you, there should be an actual, there needs to be an actual date, not just a month. Um, All right, we will add in um, what we can, we can make the date, today's date then? Yeah, that would okay. be sufficient. Um, and then is there, is there a date on that plan? I will tell you. Yes, it's uh, dated 524 uh, 19, and I believe that that better be changed, and it should say 6 yeah. 24 19. So I will make sure that that gets changed as well. All right, so there's a motion uh, and a second to approve the plan dated yesterday, and then the uh, 
or, or today, let's say, because the plan might be dated today, for an addition to the veterinary emergency and specialty hospital, subject to the following conditions, and actually we did no conditions. We right. have no conditions. And last month we didn't have any conditions, right? Yeah, okay. Good. All those in favor of approving the plan? Aye. 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 Oppose? Abstain? Six zero zero. I should have uh, started the meeting by saying we do have a quorum. Six out of the seven uh, planning board members are here, and I believe at least five or six of us were here at the last meeting, so we're all eligible to uh, vote on this. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I will Thank you. pass out um, the signature page so we can actually take care of this, and then we'll give you this when... Um, we get those plans and the last of the fees paid. Excellent. Thank you. You could pass on the the information is that we would like to see a better sign down near the road. Oh yeah. A better sign? Yeah. The, um, we, can the you... town's received several complaints that they can't find the animal hospital, especially at night. Okay. And there was a uh, letter in the paper. Oh, yeah. I will make sure that gets relayed to the client. Greg, thank you very much for uh, pushing each other. I saw a bunch of emails there making sure yeah, things we get went followed back and up forth on. A few times. So we got it all ironed Sometimes out. Sometimes that's what it takes. Yeah. Yeah. Days. No, yeah. that's really great. That was to, also to see it, like yeah. the, the okay. email train. All right. Second. We're done. Thank yes. you. Yep. Okay. Thank you. All set. I have to say one other comment, just generally not, but it is, I never understand, I always would, I would like to see, at some point when it's always the engineers that present, like your comment about the sign, it's not, I mean, they can review it, but it is, it is an opportunity for us to meet yeah. the business owners. And I know this one went on and on and on. But I, th I think the, the, one of the things with this, Rachel, is that the, the, the applicant was, is basically the contractor. And the people who actually own that aren't in this area. They're not, they're not no, even I at know. the facility. I, I, so and I'm not, I, I feel like so many times it goes on and on and on. I, I, yeah. could, I could hardly expect that they wouldn't want somebody else to, to yeah. push it along. I get that. But... We, we had a hard time at certain points getting signatures from whoever was, because their name exactly. is not on the, exactly whose name is on the, the, the application. It, it shows up a couple of ways. Sure does. So it's just a little, the lack of clarity was complicated. That, yeah. that complicated this, this pretty straightforward um, proposal application. So I'd like to go into the new business and uh, open the public hearing. And I will read um, what was in the, Public hearing notice. Um, proposed floodplain bylaw pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 40A, S5. The Town of Deerfield Planning Board will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, June 25, 2019, at 7 p.m. at the Deerfield Town Hall on the proposed amendments to the floodplain district zoning bylaw. The proposed amendments update the floodplain regulations and clarify the uses that are permitted, prohibited, and permitted by special permit in the floodplain district. The full text of the floodplain bylaw can be found on the town of Deerfield website, and paper copies can be obtained at the Deerfield town clerk's office during normal business hours. And this was posted in the uh, record of uh, the newspaper of record, the recorder, a couple times in advance. And so the public hearing is now open, and we have some. Uh, hard-working guests who are going to help uh, help walk through this. Ah, there you go. See. Is that, Thank is you, that fair to say? <laughs> you want to go to the A and R because this will probably be lengthy. Yeah. Know? Do you want to do that? I, 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 okay. Well, we just. Well, I asked for I asked for things about the agenda earlier. No one said anything. I, don't know, I didn't. And I just opened the public hearing. Yeah, I know, but there's a time for the public hearing, and I think we've done that in the past where we'll open it and then so, we'll go on. I don't, all right, I'm just, I don't disagree. Um, 
But there's also people here for the floodplain, huh? so I'm not sure. Who's here for the DNR? Yeah, yeah. I couldn't hear what Roger said. We have, we have uh, two things before us tonight. We have the floodplain bylaw changes, and we have an, an ANR. Um, so if you were willing to tuck this in in the midst of our hearing, that would be great. I, what I said is I think the floodplain thing, will there'll be a lot of discussion. The ANR will be fairly quick and we could move those people along, that's all. I know we've done that in the past. Okay. Yeah, I, the mic wasn't, I'm sorry. Well, the mic's right there, so if you could actually talk into it and if you could make a motion to... Hold, I'll make a motion that we should... Because we opened the public hearing, I wish right. we said it before I did that, but so just Well, a lot it. of times you open it because we have a time, day, uh, a time to open it, and that's what I thought you were doing, John. So now if you can just say we're gonna interrupt the public hearing. Maybe. We're gonna interrupt the public hearing to listen to the ANR. So, a and R about 34 Stillwater Road. If you can just give us a quick review of what that is, and do we have the plans here? They are right here. Yeah. Hi, my name is Frank Bernasi. Um, Chip's my dad. He owns 34. I live at 44. My brother lives at 38. Okay. Here, speak, Gary. Didn't have right. John, can you turn up the mics at all? Hi, my name is Frank Bernasi. Uh, I live at 44 Stillwater. I'm representing my dad, Chip Bernasi. Most of you know him. At uh, 34, my brother, my brother's at 38, and uh, this subdividing up back lot basically, and then giving to each of us. Thank you. So, could you describe where the property is? Uh, Stillwater Road right before the condos, um, maybe a tenth of a mile past the corner of Lee and Stillwater. So basically my, bother, my father bought the entire lot there, the entire square, back in the 70s. He gave, my, gave me a parcel at 44, my brother a parcel at 38. Now that he's getting older, the land behind is basically uh, landlocked as far as building. So you're just going to subdivide it and give it to each of us. So you're not cre you're not creating any building lots. No, you're no. just subdividing Separate the land, land. No. and the back no. land. Right. So again, just looking for the new lines. Can yep. you can you come up and show us? And Dan Dan Warner did this for you. <clears throat> yes. Yes, sir. Because usually they, we can have one. So show us which ones are the new property lines. This is the new property line. These are going to be two new lots. So, so this was already here? Yep, that's me. All right, so that's already, so, so this was all, this was all on. One, 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 so, one. so Christopher's going to own from here to here, and you're going to own from here to there. Yes. So you're really doing away with these lines. And just creating one line down the middle. Yeah. So, so I guess that's, yeah. do you want to do that all at the same time? Sure. Because right now, if, if we sign this, then all these lines stay. Yeah, as far as property transfer, we still have to transfer over to the uh, the industry. All right, so, so I mean, so we can. Because it looks like what you've done, well, Parcel A and Parcel B are just being added on to 111. Yes. Huh. Okay, I, I can't uh, say I'm clear yet. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm clear, but well, I, I, I don't so think, say, that, I don't think that the, the document line, is clear. Yes. But was this line already here? Yes. Yeah. This was one big chunk in the 70s. I built a house, my dad gave me this section. Okay. Okay. Brother built the house. He got this section. Right. Okay. That leaves a T-shaped. So he left shape. that right away off of. Oh, Stillwater. so this has been there. So we're not creating right. this. This was already there. Yeah, right. Sorry. So then it's really just but, uh, this line is really already there. But he's this is dividing it. But what I think John was asking is, do you want to eliminate this yeah. line and have all of this be your land? Because the way this plan is, if we sign it, this is always going to be there. Yes, you will own that, and yes, you will own this. But it's two separate parcels of land, right. and you can be taxed at a different 
Whichever. Right. If it's all one lot, then it would be different. Um, for right now, we'll just go with his plan. All right. Okay. So. Okay. And then we'll address this again if we need. Yeah. It's just excess acreage at one lot. Right. So you're going to kind of hold you, on if, to the you, right away. If you don't change this now, you would have to pay another fee to come back and do this, and you will also be, in the meantime, pay, be paying higher taxes because this is a separate parcel of land. Yes. All right. I mean, okay. Yeah, we can do that. I mean, it's, I mean, the fee's 100 bucks. It's not a, a big deal. What's that? Actually, to take away a um, right. line doesn't, well, it's the $100 fee, that's all. Right. Yeah. But it'll be okay. a couple of lines. It's weird that Dan didn't. Yeah. No, actually, all, all, right, all that he's adding is this one right here. Yeah. Because this was like. one parcel yeah, line. Yeah, These yeah, two yeah, are already yeah, subdivided. Yeah. Already there. Yeah. All right. So that's all that this is asking for. So that's that's all we can vote on. Yep. Is it? Uh, sure. So it's an existing parcel that's being broken into two. Well, I move that we approve the ANR for Frank J. Baranowski. At uh, was it on Stillwater Road? Yeah, thirty-four. I guess. Any? I'll second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Six zero zero. Keep plan endorsed. You have the mylar to sign, and we'll mm -hmm. sign a couple of these. Yeah, go ahead. sign it down there. Twenty-fifth. Okay. Still the twenty-fifth. The twenty-sixth. How many of those <coughs> maps, John, you want a couple of them sign? Or are you those two or Yeah, we should say yep, we got four fine. of them here. Let's do four. Mylar on one paper, and then if we keep two paper signed copies, so we should get we can sign three of those paper copies instead of three. What's that? Sign that one that's under Max's when you're done with this one. Sign this, please. Sorry, I didn't. I, I just got you down as public, but when you're an applicant. There's more time? Mm, just, yeah, there's one more. No, we can have, we just want to. I think we've got plenty. Just, I have the rubber bands. There you go. Thank you very Here. Much. Thank you. Thank you. you as well. All right, thank you for your patience. Back to the yeah. oh. public hearing oh, for the floodplain, uh, proposed floodplain bylaw. Um, all right, Chris, you want to lead this? Or? Sure. <laughs> Hi everybody, I am uh, Chris Curtis. I'm a consultant to the town uh, working on various planning and zoning issues. And um, I'm gonna take you through the basics of uh, the proposed floodplain zoning changes. There are copies of the bylaw and a fact sheet that go with it here on the table. If you haven't grabbed one of those, you all have them. And there, for anybody that might be interested, we 
got copies of the actual FEMA floodplain maps on the table here as well. Um, those are not for, for distribution, but just for, for reference. Um, so the purpose of this uh, purpose of this bylaw change is to um, try to protect people and property from the damaging effects of floods, um, to prevent uh, water pollution, um, to protect the natural flood storage areas um, in town, and and the natural flow of the of the rivers in the community. Deerfield has an existing floodplain zoning bylaw, um, which is very outdated. Uh, I think it dates back to the 1980s, so it's almost 40 years old at this point. And um, the bylaw really doesn't um, adequately protect the floodplain or really provide much um, information or guidance about what is allowed or not allowed in the floodplain. Um, it also doesn't really um, attempt to address the um, increase in, in flood frequency and severity that have already been seen and are expected with climate change, and it doesn't really um, address the needs or standards of the National Flood Insurance Program. So the floodplain district is um, shown on the maps prepared by the federal government, the flood insurance rate maps. There's zones A and A1 through 30. On those maps, basically the, the dark colored areas on the maps are, are what we're talking about. Um, those maps um, also are somewhat old at this point. Um, that's an issue that uh, the federal government is addressing now, and there probably will be new floodplain maps coming out in the next four or five years, but we're working with those maps at this point. Um, so what the um, proposed bylaw does is um, really clarifies what uses are um, permitted, uh, prohibited, and allowed by special permit in the floodplain district. And the permitted uses are agriculture, forestry, recreation, conservation, wildlife management, and buildings that were previously um, constructed prior to the adoption of the bylaw. The prohibited uses are altering, dumping, filling, removal of r riverine materials, dams or impoundments, commercial or industrial uses, parking or storage of vehicles or trailers within 200 feet of the riverbank, dumping of garbage and discharge of pollutants. And the uses by special permit are single family homes, residential accessory uses, and enlargement or alteration of, of an existing structure. So those are really important things that aren't in the current bylaw, and, and just this bylaw clarifies exactly what is allowed and not allowed um, in, in that district. And um, I, just, I should just say that, make sure everybody knows that we have had a section of our bylaws, 4300 floodplain district, and it's, it, it's very succinct and not that clear. Right. So all these things have to help clarify it, really. Yeah, and, and just again, to sort of clarify that even a bit more, the, the text of the bylaw that is here um, shows the existing language in the light colored font and the proposed changes in a darker italicized font so that you can you know, clearly identify what the changes are. So of course you, you're basically saying that everything that's in the light uh, print will go away? No, 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 no. it stays. But it's just gonna be at the dark, it's just gonna be added. added to, okay. That's correct. All right. So the revised um, bylaw also clarifies what the special permit process would be um, within the floodplain district and what findings the planning board would need to make to issue a special permit. And um, essentially that um, kind of boils down to a proposed use shouldn't um, re result in any increase in flood levels. It should meet the state um, uh, building code standards for, for flood proofing and elevation of the first floor above the base flood elevation, and septic systems um, should be located as far as possible from the, the river bank. Those are the, the flood plain, or rather the special permit um, provisions. Um, so that's, you know, the, the basic um, structure of, of the proposed changes. I guess I'll stop there. So the planning board has actually, we talked about this at our, our last meeting, and so we're happy to get input from 
other folks in the public. Did you? You had yeah. a meeting uh, about this last week. No. That was about something else. Green something development. Else. All right. All right. So that didn't. That doesn't play at all into this. Okay. So I'm looking at some of the comments we did have last month. You, you, did you put into this new, this uh, June 4th? Yes. Um, just to give you a couple of examples, um, there were some concerns raised about um, regulations that might um, restrict agricultural uses. Mm -hmm. um, and for the, the uh, final version of the bylaw we added, for example, in the four three, section 4308 prohibited uses, A, it notes that agricultural uses may restore flooded fields to pre-storm conditions. Um, under the permitted use in 4307 um, A, it also has a section on agricultural uses and it clarifies that um, irrigation and maintenance of farmlands are permitted. So those were some of the things that got brought up previously and were addressed in this final version. So the one about pre-storm, that's if storm wipes out some of the soil, they can bring it back. That's right. Yeah, yeah. that's good. And riverbanks, we had talked about riverbanks. Did you? Um, that was the irrigation. That's maintenance. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's in, in 4308A okay. also. So do we want to take public comment? Absolutely. Okay. Yes, we'd love it when the public comments. Deborah. <laughs> So apparently the mics, you got to be kind of close to it, but you also got to kind of speak up so people behind you can hear you. I've seldom had difficulty with people having okay. trouble hearing me. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Debbie Shriver, I live in Pocumtuck Drive. I, I read over this and have just have a few questions, things that for some clarification mainly. But um, uh, So one is on 4303, the establishment of the districts. Uh, is being is based on the flood insurance rate map and so on and the flood boundary and floodway maps that are dated July 2nd 1980 and I understand that these may be updated is it possible to insert language that just says or most recent version of such maps just so that it's so that when these are updated uh, you don't necessarily have to go back to town meeting to change the um, the basis. Yeah, I would just just a question, and, yeah, and okay. I, I would think that and, would be a um, suggestion a reasonable. For, for simplification. So that could just go, probably go in into that section right there somehow. That's what I, I would think. One might be able to insert so that in there. insert language most, that says that refers to the most recent the most recent version version of, of what. Uh, of the, the floodway maps, the flood uh, boundary, no, the, the insurance. flood insurance rate map, and flood boundaries uh, dash floodway maps. Insurance, yeah, 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 yeah. Just, okay. uh, yeah, I, yeah. I didn't work out the proper syntax, but I think rate map and why would we be bound to a map that we don't know flood insurance rate map. the shape of, or is just sort of going to be generated yeah. by a yeah. federal yeah. agency or an entity that has nothing or no consideration on what's going on at Deerfield. You're just opening the door to, you know, let someone else determine what goes on here in town. Well, at least if we have these maps, we can see what it means and where it goes. You know, if someone else makes a map and we're automatically going to get accept whatever map is created, then it kind of puts us, it takes away our, our control and influence over the process. It's the same map, it's just a newer iteration. Well, right, but well, it, it might be redrawn. It, it, the boundary it, it, could change, so it, it could affect it, it, different it, landowners and right. stuff. It, so It would impact more and more people. I'm yeah. but it, also, it is a good point, actually. Um, and I, yeah. and I should, should have pointed this out. 
you, you actually um, would have to adopt the new maps I as see. a You'd have to go as through a, separate, town, through a town a, meeting a separate, vote, uh, right? Entity. So Fine. It, you can't make a reference to a future map. Okay, got right. it. Got it. I have another question for clarification. I'm looking at item four three zero five. It it notes in the floodway designated on the flood boundary flood wall map all encroachments, including fill, new construction, <coughs> etc., um, and are prohibited. When you go over to 4309, just help me here, 4309A, no structure or building in the floodplain district shall be erected, constructed, substantially improved, and so on, no earth materials dumped, and so on, unless a special permit is granted by the planning board. Is that a problem? Does one contradict the other? Uh, I know, I've noticed no. 4305 is the older. 4305 Existing. is referring to the regulatory floodway, which is different than the floodplain. Okay. The regulatory floodway is basically the river channel and that part yep. that's actively moving water. Right. The floodplain is what 4309 is referring to and really all the rest of the, of the bylaw. The, the only reference to the floodway is in that 4305. Okay. You basically cannot do anything at all in the floodway and, you know, sort of a common sense thing that you wouldn't, all right. you wouldn't want to be doing that. But flood, so floodplain is actually has a different, um, right. I see it has a different definition up here too. Yes. Good. Thank you for that. May I ask also about 4306, uh, floodplain regulations. Um, it, it notes that the development, whether permitted as right or by special permit, must be in compliance with the Mass River Protection Act and Wetlands Protection Act. Just wanted to uh, ask, it, it, is there a way to be clear about which one would hold sway uh, if, if one or the other is more or less restrictive? I don't think that's the place of, of a local zoning bylaw. I think that really is something that um, re really generally you don't reference, you don't even reference um, state regulations in local bylaws because those are a separate piece they of legislation. They are separate entity, okay. They, they are referenced here just because of the importance that compliance with all of these things means. So which but, would... But I don't think trying to do an interpretation of state law in a zoning okay. bylaw would be appropriate. So the, would, which would hold, flat, uh, hold sway? Well, this? there's, you know, that's, that's an impossible question to answer okay. because you'd, you'd have right. to have you'd a have specific have an, an instant fact, you know, issue that okay. was being But here they presented. have to be in compliance with both of these acts you're saying. Yes, they're, but they're, you know, they're independent pieces of legislation. Right. So well, one's not on more important than the other. Right. right. I mean, but, it does, might be, but does one have a superseding authority, I guess, is another way of question. Well, the River Protection Act is really a subset of the Wetlands Protection Act. Yeah. Um, but does either of those have I, a... I think they do separate independent things. The no, River I, Protection but... Act really protects the river corridor from, from development. The Wetlands Protection Act is really dealing with, with wetlands. Um, so they're, they're really, they, they don't... Uh, they my, don't my, really my question wasn't about those two acts. My question was those two acts in relationship to, to the floodplain, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, to the floodplain yeah. bylaw. Does, do, does the, easier with the numbers. would one have it, being, uh, supersede the other with the, the state laws for uh, oh. River protection and wetlands protection supersede floodplain. Would they the floodplain supersede lo by lo local floodplain? Correct. Um, generally, yeah, state regulation would take precedence over a local regulation. Okay. I can't think of an example of how that would actually happen in something. In case That's like what I'm wondering. Is there a... It, yeah. I think my question is really <coughs> revolving around whether uh, there's, there becomes an inherent conflict as to which, which, um, so. which law ha has the, the um, pre preeminence in a, in a situation. Yeah. So again, I think the state law okay. would, would have that. Um, one other question on 4309, item B, 
and in relation to the non-conforming uses, 4311B, is, is there a contradiction there? Under 4309B3, the enlargement or alteration of an existing structure uh, provided that no addition is more than 25 percent larger than the footprint of the structure that existed at the time of adoption. And then on um, 4311B, under non-conforming uses, any existing use or structure may continue and may be maintained, repaired, and improved, but in no event made larger. So, uh, I'm sorry, where's, where's the second reference? The second you're... reference is in 4311B, under non-conforming uses. It, 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 it's, it sounds to me like People with a non-conforming use cannot make their yes. structure larger. That's correct. So an example of that might be um, if there was a commercial use, an existing commercial use located in the floodplain, they would not be allowed um, to increase that. Um, But under the special second. permit section, it says they could up to 25 percent by special permit. So is right. So I guess my question is just whether um, it seems like people with a non-conforming use are at a disadvantage. Are disadvantaged? They should, and they and they should be, right? Well, I guess that's my question. Is that, was that I intended for some, some reason, or is it just? I, I didn't understand how it tallied with the uses by special permit, that's all, under. Yeah, it looks like that probably could use some clarification. So, yeah, yeah, I, I think okay. yeah, yeah, no. that could use some Fine, I just was wanting to ask, raise them as questions. Um, the final thing I had. Well, uh, just, just, uh, so what are you suggesting? You think they contradict each other or one is for conforming uses, the other is non-conforming. And so uh, like are there examples of potential non-conforming uses that wouldn't be allowed to be expanded? Right. Where that's, conforming that's, use that's could be allowed to expand up I to think, 25 percent. I think that's what's needed here as a clarification. Of well, I think that's what it's, I mean, it's under the heading, 4311 is, is non-conforming uses. We define non-conforming use. So, so I think you would just starting to say, if, it, if it's in a residential agricultural zone, but there happens to be a business there, so it's really not conforming to the current bylaws, that would right. not be allowed to ex be expanded, whereas if it was a, a house, it could be expanded. That would be a good example of, of how that would so play I think out. So I think there is a difference there. Okay. Yeah. It, it, I find it a little unclear. To, I, you, know. you have to know what, uh, and, and yeah, exactly. not that well, we're the experts, but there are. What the non-conforming use is. What does non-conforming mean? Yeah. What, yeah, what does yeah. that mean, and what does yeah, that right. imply for the floodplain? I mean, uh, we get cases uses, where people don't have the right frontage or something, so they're non-conforming. They had it yeah, that would be you know, 50 years ago, and, and the, yeah. you know. Okay. Kind of thing. Just, kind of so, does that help? Yeah. That helps, but I guess I, I guess I, if I were, if I were coming before the board with a proposal, and I was trying to understand how it worked, with respect to the bylaw, I'd have a hard time. I, you know, it'd be challenging to what understand. What would make it more clear? You think? Yeah. yeah. But if it was conforming at one time, and then we change the zoning so it's not conforming now, why should they get penalized because they conformed originally? 
But they're not, are they? Well, that's the thing. They're not getting penalized necessarily, but well, they they're also explain. not allowed to do something that, right. uh, that a more conforming well, that's could do. Right? But penalized. the problem is it's, it's, it's also kind of to protect them because they're in a floodplain where they yeah. are more, they're more at risk. Okay. So you're kind of setting things up so people don't do something. That puts them, their property more at risk. So it is a, it is a complex, you know. It's, uh, so like the last one, it says a non-conforming structure which is destroyed may be re rebuilt on the same location but not larger than its original. So it's, it's not penalizing, it's actually, it's kind of like grandfathering it in, right. but it's not letting it go beyond that. Which is what, Which is what conforming uses are, yeah. is grandfathered in uses. Right, right. basically. So it's not penalizing them, it's just not giving them so, a, a sort of extra, so if it, but become non, okay. more non-conforming. <laughs> I'm still finding it a little confusing. If it were a house that were there, that was... Uh, it was conforming. It was, it was a house in a residential district. Yeah. Then it wouldn't be a non-conforming use. I see. Then it, was, it would be a conforming use within yeah. that floodplain. It Got it. Commercial use in a right. residential district. It's a non. Is a non-conforming. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Thank you, John. But I think at one time you could <laughs> put a commercial building anywhere. There was no zoning. You know, right. So we're not telling them they have to take it down. They I just know, can't no, expand no, no. it. Is all the same. I know, but in maybe your mind it doesn't. You don't seem like you're penalizing that property, but in my mind you are. And that's all I'm just saying. Yep. So do you want to amend that then? I'm just asking why, you know, why should, why should they be penalized if they've met the criteria and then zoning changed and or was created? Well, they're not being penalized in any way. They can, can continue to be in that spot and continue the use for as but long as... But they couldn't as... make it any larger. Right. So in my mind, that's and penalizing. Right now they could. And right now they could. Well, is that, is that true? Under your existing bylaws, how do you I, treat non-conforming uses now um, in, in, let's say, a residential district? ZBA. We, yeah, it would not be. It would go to ZBA exactly. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. So it's it's not a it by right be. thing to be able to expand a non-conforming <coughs> use in your bylaws is what I think I you're saying. I don't know if we've, we've ever we've allowed crossed people that. To I don't think we have, but I. Uh, I would imagine if somebody came to us with a non-conforming use, grandfather yeah, makes it more non-conforming if they didn't meet the requirements of the uh, square footage and I'm just trying to think if we dealt really with anything like that. We did right down the road, but it wasn't in the floodplain. It was non-conforming house on a non-conforming lot and they wanted to, you know, go beyond the, um, the scope of the bylaws and, and we allow that. But well, I think Max is right. We wouldn't. Plan. We we wouldn't make that decision. That would be a ZBA decision, because that's outside of the outside of the bylaws. So, in that sense, they're already kind of penalized because, and that's why these bylaws are cha they're changed not by us here, but by the town because that has to be kind of more significant voting, not just the seven of us. Right. And they right. also have a more significant advantage too because they. But they could appeal business, it to the ZBA. You're me, saying they're allowed to be a business in a residential zone. So that gives them some sort of advantage also. Like, so when you're talking about them being penalized by not being able to expand, well, they already have a business advantage because they don't have any immediate competitors. So. Would it help to just add a definition uh, for non-conforming and or some way of clarifying those that, differences? That's, a, that's something that's already in the zoning bylaw. Yeah, we'll right. have to go and look at that definition. Right. That's, that's a standard term that's, that's in the zoning right, act as well. Right, 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 all right. Um, in terms of penalties for any for violations, uh, I guess one question is whether Section 5130 would need to be amended so that uh, p penalties by the planning board. Where are you, where are you looking say, at? say the number again. 5130, which under enforcement, administrative and enforcement. Not so that uh, it, I think it references penalties by the ZBA. And I'm wondering if in light of the, the fact that the, appear, as I understand it, the planning board would be the permit granting authority for the, for the uh, floodplain, under the floodplain uh, district, are, are they actually covered? It's, it, it, ZBA is referenced explicitly, planning board is not, but the, 
should that section be amended to include the planning board? You're in the administrative section? I believe so. So you send it to add, you could add a, or any decision rendered by the Board of Appeals and or the Planning Board. Yeah. Shall be $300. Right. But it's really any violation of this bylaw. The zoning bylaw. I guess another question well, is presumably that bylaw. would apply to the floodplain yeah, district anything, bylaw, right? Yeah, anything in them. Right, but it just makes explicit the planning board also as a permit granting, special permit granting body. The way I read it, it would already cover yeah. floodplain How so? It would, it would, the, as yeah. the planning board? Yeah, I'm, I'm agreeing with what John's saying. It, it's pretty clear the penalty for violation of any provision of this mm -hmm. bylaw. Yeah. Okay. I don't think you have to change that. All but right. I guess why they added this comma or any decision rendered by the Board of Appeals is those might be decisions. But those decisions would be based on the bylaws too. So I'm not sure why they have that section. Here. Right. Okay. Yeah. Just so that it isn't excluding the planning board is no, the, I don't see why is the key it, thing. Why Good. It would be Good. That was all of my questions. Thank you for, thank you for taking the time. Thank to you for answer. pointing that out, though. We don't we don't look at that penalty section very often. <laughs> you think that's been applied ever? No. Anybody else? Come on up. Thanks, Debbie. I'm Judy Kundal from Lee Road. I just have a couple of comments. One is section 5307, permitted uses. I think. Oh, can you say four, the numbers again? Sorry. 4307? Sorry. Five, yes, three, yes. No, four, three, four, 3007. Um, and Introductory clause says provided they, they do not require structures, fill or storage. And then A says that agriculture cultural uses are, are permitted, including barns or farm related structures. To me that seems to be in conflict. I think it's just making a clear exception this was relative to what we discussed previously. So this came up at your prior meeting. They yes. were concerned about the barns. But I wonder, wouldn't the, the, you not allow new barns, but allow existing barns under the non-conforming use section? No, it wouldn't be a non-conforming use. It's a permitted use. Barns. All right, so it's just a clarification of the introductory clause. Okay. Correct. And then my other one is 4308D. And it's, I'm not clear. The special permit authority can grant a variance for parking or storage of vehicles. I'm not quite sure why that language is in there Same since there right. is a variance provision in the state law generally, 40A section 10, and the criteria are a little bit different for the hardship. Not to, it includes more than lot size or configuration. I think it sets up a confusing situation if you have a so the special permit granting authority under zoning is the ZBA. 
and they act under 40A Section 10. Well, this, uh, two things. One thing is that we have to discuss who is the special permit granting authority. And that might have to be explicit in here if it is the planning board and not the ZBA. Yeah, because under, the, if, under the zoning bylaw, it's, it's, the, it's the ZBA. Unless specified else, right. uh, otherwise, it's, right. it's a ZBA. But here we're considering um, making it the planning board or right. proposing. It, yeah, it does say the planning board is the special permit granting authority here. Under this section, under 4308. Four well, the special permit granting authority under this whole bylaw is the planning board where you, where where you does look it, at. Does it say four, that? 4309, uses by special permit. It says, unless a special permit is granted by the planning board in the first sentence. I just think it's it's not a. clear when you have special permit granting authority in 4308 and then, then you don't define special permit granting authority until 4309. But then I also think the variance language that you're throwing in is different from the variance language in the statute is all. I'm, I'm, unless you wanted to limit it to only lot size or configuration, I might make it clear that they could grant a variance in accordance with the criteria of 40 oh, boom, A section thing. 10. It's all to, gotcha. Which is soil condition, shape, topography, land or structures. Yeah, I think. I would say that's exactly correct, that this is, the intent of this is to restrict the, the decision further than a general variance. I'm, I don't know whether I'd use the word variance then. I think that confuses it. Uh, the special permit granting authority may permit. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we don't, we never done variances, right? No. No. So, yeah, maybe just. And here it just says they can consider we'll whether a variance, send them over to the ZBA. Yeah, but I mean, the idea is to not have people go back and forth. And right. Right. Variance waiver. Right. But it's still a, it's still a ZBA issue, isn't it? No. Well, what, what, what we're saying is should everything in this be under the planning board? I think I would add then under the definitions for this floodplain district bylaw, the special permit granting authority is the planning board. Yeah, and in, in our um, Marijuana section and the solar section, we, we did that. Um, yeah. So we can just check on the language. Yeah, I think that makes it clearer. And I think we do say it kind of up front. And then I guess Where's I wouldn't the use the word variance. Solar 30. Because that's implies something special. Okay. Different provisions. was all I had. So it changed that language from provision, different provisions or so that not variance. Right. Say, I mean, say permit them or allow this, allow storage under certain circumstances. The special permit takes some time to think about. So Chris, we can draft this, but in section 3800, which is solar, we actually have a thing that says special permit granting, it defines special permit and then it defines special permit granting authority for the purposes of this section, the planning board is a special permit granting authority. Right. Because right. if it's, if it's not language. stated clearly, then it goes, it defaults to the ZBA. Yeah, I, I think that's good language to, 
probably add in here. 3,800, just an initial section. D. Oh, yeah. New yeah, this section. is under 3,812 definitions, actually. Right. Oh, it's, it's in definitions, and we're going to have a new definition section too. Right? Oh, then we do, talked about, should these definitions go into our general definition, or they go inside of the... Well, can't there be a duplicate? It seems to me that's the smartest thing in the world, is to have, have them places. at the beginning, the ones mm -hmm. that are, it's like a teacher thing. You have your glossary for the pertinent ones, but then you have another one that's everything, so that if you run into it someplace else in the document, I mean, I don't know if that takes an act of Congress <laughs> in town too, but I think <laughs> in terms of being able to read these and make them readable, sorry, that having them in the appropriate place as well as a nice big chunky glossary yeah. would keep us both keep make it e more easy to read and keep us honest in terms of how we're using yeah. the language. It's, it's really useful to, to reconfigure your entire bylaw to have all the definitions at the beginning. At the beginning, yeah. yeah. So that'd be another another project. As yeah. we've, we've kind of mentioned that. Yeah. It'd probably be worth I'll put doing that on well. my list. Where's my little <laughs> list? But, yeah. So those are those are helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. Anna Lee Wolf Cool for Mountain Road. Um, section four just questions. <clears throat> Two of them. Section forty three ten B one three A, which is kind of on <clears throat> page three towards the bottom. B one three A. It talks about um, all buildings and structures within the zone shall be elevated so the lowest floor is located at or above the base flood, flood elevation. I'm wondering what the reference point is for having it at the base flood elevation. Certainly all we see with the media these days with rising water so quickly that is the base flood elevation really too conservative <clears throat> here? Do we need to have... Can you tell us again what section? I'm sorry, it's I'm section sorry. 4310, okay. lowercase b, lowercase i, or 1, yeah. 3a. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> On page 3. So I'm just wondering why it's chosen that um, our new regulation should say, you know, at the base flood elevation, when in fact it seems like that might in five years be underwater. So that, so that language comes directly out of the state building code, which um, in turn comes from the National Flood Insurance Program. Uh -huh. So it's sort of consistency across all those regulations. Um, so I think it's important to, to be consistent in this case. Even if it might mean that in five years we're underwater in those areas. Well, it does say located at or above, so I would hope people who care will put it above. <laughs> um, I, mean, I don't know that we need New Orleans stilts, but <laughs> maybe we do. I don't know. <laughs> okay. And I think what you were saying earlier, though, too, is that local would defer to federal anyway. And state, okay. yeah. And then my understanding is that these are just sort of the general overview and then these are the specific regs. Is that, yes, that's, that's correct? intended just to kind yeah. of help in understanding the basics so, of. Okay, on the last page, and I wasn't, I just wasn't able to pull out exactly where this is referring to, but it talks about <clears throat> of the overview, septic systems must be located as far as possible from the river bank. I'm not quite sure where that is on the regs, but that feels very subjective. I don't know if there's a it's way the we It's the feasibility can... clause. I was... <laughs> yeah. Right? As feasible as well, far yeah, as Well, yeah, I mean, anything feasible. for a price, but, yeah, right, it feels... Which one is this? Um, it's, well, it's on the overview, but it's the last sentence of the overview when it says septic systems must be located as far as possible from the riverbank. I mean, but, my, my budget might dictate that it has to be pretty close. <laughs> the language in the bylaw is pretty similar. It's, it's in section 4310A6. And it says, on-site wastewater disposal systems shall be located as far from rivers or water bodies as is feasible. Yeah. I mean, so doesn't Title V address the location of that? So, you know, that's pretty subject subjective because uh, we could say, well, your house is 
200 feet from the river and Title V allows a septic system to go there, but we'd prefer it to be 400 feet. Do we have the right to make someone pump their septage, you know, 200 extra feet to keep it away from the river because we feel it's better? Mm -hmm. trying to think about how you could make that more specific. I think the intent was to allow the planning board some flexibility there. I mean, you can put a septic system within 100 feet of a well. So. Yeah. I mean, I, I... Isn't that still true? I think that yes. the, the yeah. flexibility, you still have to offer landowners flexibility in terms of how they're plotting out their land so what you're doing is you're pointing out an issue that's going to be significant at some point it's going to, person for whom it's going to be the most significant is the landowner and as Max points out I mean that's that's probably the biggest implication <coughs> frankly in a flood there's going to be all kinds of water whooshing around so it's not like we, we can't predict we just do the best we can at that point. Is that, though, where then the planning board, if, if some plans are being presented and the planning board thinks, well, you can, it's more, it is feasible for you to pump it farther away, and the, the person who's proposing it says it's not feasible, then it's just whether you make, take a vote and decide whether it's feasible or not? Is that how it would come down? I, I don't really know. I, I think that the board would have a difficult time proving that it is beneficial to move it further away than what the state regulations require. Because as Max said, you know, you currently can have a, a leaching facility within 100 feet of a well. So if they say my septic system is going to be 200 feet away from my well, but now you want me to move it further away because I'm nearer a river or, you know, so I... I don't know. Well, I think we do the state regulations say feasible or do they have it more specific? No, it's more know? specific. It's an actual feat. Yeah. Feet like from a river. Yes. Oh, so could we have the feet from the river too? I think the intention here was if you have you know a lot where you can put the septic system anywhere on the lot that you would choose the location that is the furthest from the river on that lot that's reasonable. That's the kind of language we were trying to work with here. I mean, I... R rather than putting it closer to the river. Um, I think all, a lot... All would, other things being equal, basically. Sure. I think a lot would have to do with the soil conditions. I mean, you know, in oh, certain yeah. areas of town, Clearly. you know, you might have 40 acres of clay, but in er other areas you have 40 acres of sand, but there are also areas in town where you can have sand, then clay, then a little more sand, and depending on how and where it is. Yeah, and clearly, yeah. Title V supersedes this, again, yeah. this provision. Yeah. Um, so that would be the first thing that have to be satisfied. Sure. Um, and in terms of whether or not you can afford it, that's a, that's a reason, right? Like, that's an actual, as possible, if it's not possible for you to pay more to put it someplace else, then that's not possible. Like, well, no one's going to demand that someone I mean, pays yeah, ten or. I don't want to go into my 401k, but I want to put my addition yeah. on or something like that. I mean, I mean, I think some local board of health regulations, in conjunction with Title V, give a municipality the ability to dictate where the location of a septic system is. If I if I remember right, the language is specific, identifiable areas. So there was a time in Deerfield where, you know, the Board of Health thought, well, we don't want to see raised septic systems. So you couldn't build a, a raised septic system for a long time. Uh, but then it was challenged, and, and the state regulation said, if you have a, a specific identifiable area that is a problem, then yes, you can up the ante on, you know, the construction and location. But otherwise, you just can't blanket say you, you can't do something like that in the town. So, you know, I guess... If a situation came before us and uh, through engineering, we, we saw that there was a problem here, even though it was in a, an allowable area, we might have some leeway to say, okay, yeah, you could do it here, but it would be better off over here 
because we, you know that's where you get into you know protecting the well-being of the applicant as well. I don't know. I think that's a good example. Yeah. Of how this might play out. Yeah. So if I'm understanding then by having it less well defined you're hoping for a better outcome through sort of a negotiation process. Well, and then wow. each site is going to have different once you define it then the the specs for that you that you clarify um, are going to be we're going to end up interpreting it for each individual site given the it, title it, nine, it, it uh, title five, title five cons yeah. concerns, or soil concerns, or and, and likely actually cost isn't even going to be. I, I wouldn't even. I don't even know that we would ever get into that. That that's not. My point is, we would never insist that someone pay fifteen thousand dollars more, you know, to satisfy this. Like, if there's another reasonable way it's another reasonable yeah, site. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. Yep, that we're not going to insist yeah, that yeah, people yeah, spend yeah. money they don't have. To do something heroic, so overly heroic, like, yeah. and that would be. So that gives us that discretion because each site's different. That's so what it's I. Very mean. subjective. Very, yeah. It uh, ends up being subjective given the site. Okay. Uh, right? Am I? Yeah. yeah. So you were saying earlier, almost too, that in general, when we're allowing these sort of as possible, as feasible, that we're hoping that this then can give the planning board more leverage rather than um, giving the planning board less authority because because actually of the subjectivity right. you have, of it. You have a good point there too, right? So sometimes it could be that the planning board would have more authority just because it's there and we say, no, mm -hmm. you can, you can still move way. it over here. Mm -hmm. if this is feasible and so you could okay. do this. So that, mm -hmm. that's, to your point, it, that's... Who knows? <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. It's, you, you can't go for each different site, but because each different site has different concerns, um, it would be hard to legislate for all of that ones. So where does that leave us? Do we want to change that wording? Or? I, I think it's okay the way it is, but it's up to you. I mean, a lot of the special permit is... Is a lot of the special permit issues are subjective and you work it out. Mm -hmm. And it, the main thing is it's not, the benefits outweigh the detriments to the town. That's the definition, summary definition of special permit. Mm. So really it's a lot of it is, is if it's gonna affect neighbors or gonna affect the town, oh, we, that's we, would, we that's would be tougher on it if it's not gonna affect, that it's you know. Benefits outweigh the, the detriments to the town rather than to the person who is actually to the neighborhood and the town I think it's yes. so it's not the person itself okay they have they want to hurt themselves that and it doesn't hurt anybody else it's like we don't want to get involved right. or as involved okay all right mm. thank you <laughs> thank you all right you're getting feedback we're getting feedback So I guess just we, we touched on it, but just be clear with the planning board. It's the planning board members that are here um, uh, positive about us being the special permitting authority? Well, I, I think that the planning board or somebody should always be the special permitting uh, granting authority for the biggest reason is that if uh, someone, an applicant, uh, doesn't like our decision, they can go to the Zoning Board of Appeals is what it's supposed to be for. The way Deerfield has most of their things going to the ZBA, then you have to go to court after that. Mm -hmm. I, I completely Tomorrow agree with that as well. I think you should be the, the special permit granting authority for everything. Yeah. Many, a lot of towns have that? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And Interesting. At the Planning Commission, we always recommended that the towns mm -hmm. go that way. All right. I know, I've, I've known Roger Max might know this, but there's been plenty of battles years ago about changing that, but. CBA was so entrenched in this town that they wanted that control, and that's why it stayed like that. Um, but I, I always felt that if it, it caused a, a unique problem because, you know, people, if they were denied something, uh, they, they always just had to go to court. There was nobody else to, you know, bring their case to. 
It's a lot more expensive for the applicant in that yeah. case. And I, I thought it makes more sense in many cases because we're, we're often doing a site plan review. You know, A and R's are involved. They're sitting in front of us anyway. Right. And then, then sometimes they have to go to this other one to right. get this other thing. And it would be easier if we just did it at the same time. Right. That's happened a lot of times. And how many times have applicants? I mean, and and I then, see their frustration because we don't want to do something because ZBA yeah. and the ZBA doesn't want to do something because yeah. you know, and it's like. Yeah. Yeah. And now that we're the entrenched board in town, we can take. <laughs> <no>. <laughs> We're going to write about this later. That will be our, our legacy. All right. So that's so. But anyway, for now, we have to specifically say it in this bylaw until we change the larger <laughs> bylaw. Anything else? Anything from planning board members? So this is a public hearing. And then, so I think this, the comments we heard are not large enough that we need to have another right. hearing. At this point, I think we could just make these quick things and bring it to town meeting. Right. I, I think the general rule of thumb is if there's a change in the bylaw that is making it um, more restrictive, yeah. then, then you have to go back and, and, another and do hearing. another hearing. But I don't believe that the couple of changes that have been talked about here are more, yeah. I would put them in the category of clarifications. Um, yeah. And I don't think they make it more restrictive, so I don't believe you have to. Um, the only thing that I'd like to add is that being <laughs> members of a town, being members of a town that have got a couple of big floodplain construction projects coming up, I wonder why it is that we're talking about more restrictions on working You're talking floodplain. about the sewer? The Excuse me? The, the treatment plants? Yes. That's uh, okay. I've had this kind Why? Why? What's but the, with this you timing? You have to have sewage treatment plants near the river. That's the whole point. So I, I mean, what, the, that, what did you say? The sewage. Don't the sewage treatment plants? I mean, isn't it better to have them near the river? Well, I don't know if it's necessarily better, but just because of what they do, it's always in the lowest area because right. everything's gravity fed. Gravity fed. Okay. Yeah. All right. I, so. I had that question recently, and yeah. thank you. That's. Yeah. I, I'm just curious. Why are we talking about this now? The, the, the origins of this are uh, the town received a uh, grant from the state to do a municipal vulner vulnerability plan. Which Who applied for the grant? The Board of Selectmen. Okay. And, and are you being paid from that grant? That's right. Yeah. Okay. So that was one of the recommendations of the plan which the town adopted through its Board of Selectmen that, that floodplain zoning needed to be updated and improved. As, I'll just repeat, as members of a town that are going to be doing some major construction projects in the floodplain, is this the time to become more restrictive on... Are we going to just going to cost ourselves more money? I, I don't think this bylaw would, would have that effect. Would impact it, because it's already there, it's existing. You think it's going to... But it's, in, it's a non-conforming use in... Yeah. It's an industrial mm -hmm. complex. You're talking about the wastewater treatment plant? Yes. Yeah. Both of okay. them. Um, it's an industrial use. Right. Or a commercial right. use. It's, a it's a municipal use. It's a municipal use, use, yes. But it's, okay. it's, it's, I'm, I'm just, I'm puzzled by the timing, that's all. Yeah, there's no, no, no connection at all. I don't all. think there's um, a connection, but I, I kind of, I, I, I see your point, Max, because I know that uh, there were a lot of things that, we tried to get done in town before, and just because it was a municipality, we didn't get a, a free pass. Matter of fact, they went the other way. So I can. We tried I, to hold ourselves to a higher standard right. and so, cost ourselves I mean, more money. There are there is some things in here that could really uh, damper the, uh, the the construction at the sewer treatment plants. I mean, if if the oh, Corps of right. Engineers isn't enough restriction, well, with any. That, that to me, when, the work that I've done in, near rivers, in rivers, the Corps of Engineers has always been uh, the, the determining yeah. entity. Um, one way to address that question would be to add into 4307 permitted uses, we could add a clarification that municipal uses, including wastewater treatment plants, are permitted to use. Yeah. yeah. I'm just, like I'm just I think that makes too. a ton of sense because yep. then yep. you're you're covering and Max I think you make a really strong point that the that we don't want to impact that project. That that project benefits the town. We're looking for something that benefits the town. And yeah. if if it ends up being 
I, I don't know. I just don't, I don't think that, I think that, um, I, I, I think this is more in response to rise, rising, you know, uh, um, more flooding and Irene and farmers getting, you know, significantly impacted and trying to guide, guide the growth around the, the changed river pattern. I mean, we did, I was at that municipal, the, you know, any kind of dramatic flood, flood event, well, all of this is out the window anyway, but there are a lot of other less significant, but also highly impactful flood events that we have had and we will persist in having. So this way we're not responding, always being responsive, we're being proactive. I'm imagining that's why we got the grant and that's why the grant was available. That, that's right. Yeah, so you're thinking of the wastewater treatment plant as an industrial use, but it's, it's not in that category. Well, it's, the construction that's going on there. Yeah, yeah. okay. But I think, I think we can address that I with, with that clarification in the permitted uses section. <laughs> Is, is there another municipal use that you're thinking about that would also be impacted? Uh, bridge construction? Well, bridges aren't regulated under zoning. Well, I'm just, I'm just thinking about all the things that we're yeah. just driving the cost up on right. by enacting more rules and regulations. Yeah. Well, and are we being, like with the stormwater, the state sort of drove that bus and we were just kind of trying to keep in conformance with state regulations. Is, is there something that's driving this other than the availability of funds for writing more regulations? Um, really protecting the town, um, people in town, the, uh, the structures and, and, uh, and the, you know, generally, they, like it says in the, in the uh, purposes of the bylaw this, at the outset, the, um, it's all well intended, but it's just looking at yeah. what the, the, the outcome is. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm all for protecting people and property, but right now, as the town sits, it is the way it is. Um, and we have had a couple of, you know, severe floodings, and, I, and I'm going to use for Deerfield, severe floodings when the water gets deep enough where Main Street and Old Deerfield goes underwater. Um, I, I, you know, there's areas along... Um, that section of town that where people own land probably could build a house, but I think that they're smart enough not to, and that's probably why there's been no development down there. Uh, I know yeah, you could build houses taller, the cost of flood insurance and everything. I think a lot there's a lot of things that prohibit people from doing that type of thing. Um, but well, there, there has been, you know, elsewhere in the country, obviously, a lot of building in floodplains that was really ill-advised and mm -hmm. has cost, you know, the town and the, and really all of us as taxpayers a lot of money. Well, um, it, it's true, and, and I agree with that, but I mean, how do you, I, I mean, Deerfield's a community of 5,000 people, and then you take a place like New Orleans that I don't know how many, there's in excess of a million people, and we know it's six feet under the ocean, <laughs> and that they continue yeah. to, to build it's and develop there, you watching. know, it's like, what are they thinking? Yeah. So you're saying, so in um, prohibited uses, we have commercial or industrial uses that are prohibited. So we, w we wouldn't want that to include municipal projects. So either... Well, I mean, if, if, the, if we privatize the sewer treatment plant like Sunderland has, and that becomes property of a operator... Then it's a commercial... Like Holyoke and Chicopee, or yeah. I believe Holyoke's turned theirs over to a private company. Yeah. So, so we could say that's the operation. In, in, of the, so we could say municipal. It's the ownership. Of the yeah. So you could say municipal services versus, or, you know. So no matter who controls it. I'm, I'm just pose, posing the question because it just seems like an odd timing for events and reviews of the floodplain. Well, that's that's what we're here for is to get yeah. your input. So. Okay. I just. And I don't think it's. I just think it's also so, a convergence. It's a. It's like really un. It's an uncomfortable timing. I totally agree, but it's just a convergence. One, there's deferred maintenance that's lingered on, and the other is a weather, weather pattern. So it's not, I think it's an unfortunate convergence. So, so what I was suggesting is that we add a letter G to 4307, which would say municipal uses, including wastewater treatment plants. Yep. Is that 
Makes sense. Mm. I haven't seen your map of, of well, all that's in Waitley, but I mean, it, it looks like every brook has a floodplain as well. Oh, you're talking about these maps? On the maps, yes. There's, um, a, there's a floodplain for every river and brook. Most of the it's, brooks have a fairly narrow floodplain. Yeah, you can check that out. Those are, those are the federal flood insurance maps. Right, but I saw them. At, at, at the same time, um, and I don't, I don't think even municipal projects have need some guidelines. And um, I, I do remember not too distant past municipal project that I, I feel like was built before any of us <laughs> knew it went up and uh, didn't go through any site plan review. Um, well, the ambulance building. Well, the ambulance and the DPW there, the, uh, that whole thing. That was the expedited permitting district. Right. Yeah. right. So we didn't so have authority. We had nothing Expedited to before the neighbors even <laughs> knew what was going on. Um, so anyway, so it's a permitted use, but it still has to go through. It still has to be looked at. And uh, Well, you raise a good point. Does it belong, do municipal uses belong in the uses by special permit uh, section? Just, just to get no, a little bit exempt. of. Well, actually, in our general bylaws, the municipal projects are, are exempt anyway. You're right. Right. Aren't all municipal uses exempt from even state zoning? Well, I mean, you can you can build a, a you right. can build a police station or a fire station pretty much anywhere. It's uh, it's true. So, yeah. I mean, that would be the the overall answer to yeah. his question. I was just trying to satisfy the concern by making yeah. right. it really explicit, I guess. Yeah. But you're right. That that is true. I think school, yeah, schools, schools, schools the, churches, the design consultant to get. No. Too deep into the. Yes. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what that, the legal answer to that would be. If somebody came along and wanted to build a church in a floodplain, could just stop them. But that's not right. Really, that's not really No, I'm, I'm just saying, though, if, if somebody came along and wanted to build a church in the floodplain, could you stop them? I don't think so. Uh, I think you're right. I think that's an exempted use. Yeah. From, Zoning. Sure except, I think I think the language though is except in cases where there's a threat to safety and welfare. Well, so you might actually be able to make that argument about a church because right. But I, the chances of I think that would be argued if it was in an area where it could be like a flash flood. I mean I don't know. But then you say agricultural use is exempted in every every zone also. Right. And child care. Right. <laughs> Not gonna put child care on the river bank, but <laughs> because most child small so, child you know, care agricultural run out of, uses is another example. We're, we're just sort of reiterating yeah. what the state statute says here. All right, so our next steps would be to... Um, so we're not going to add the G. G. No, because it's already exempted. Okay. So I would um, make the um, suggested changes and, and get you back a, a text with those highlighted so you can look at them one more time. And... Uh, and then I think it's... And normally then we vote to recommend to the town meeting. Right. Bylaws. Right. right. I'm just wondering if there's any... Um, we don't really have a procedure for... Or, or do we get comment from the zoning board? Or the select board. No? We send it out. Or select, and or select board. It'd probably be a nice thing to do, especially... You don't want them at town meeting to some zoning board people to say, oh, we don't want it to be the planning board that has the authority. And the or something. Conservation Commission, I mean, I would think you'd want to pass it around. Yeah. Because Con Con would also want to see if it's yeah. not, not necessarily impactful to them. Mm -hmm. yeah, anything also that has to do with wetlands is. Building commission. So if it's a permitted use in the floodplain, and there's a section where if you add 25% more larger footprint, has to bring, be brought up the present code. So now, I think the code says we have to be at or above 
the flood height of the flood. So you would have to raise that whole structure if you wanted to go 25% or more. Um, you, you would have to raise the addition. Well, I, mean, I don't think it reads that way, though. That brings up another question, Chris, is on floodplain maps, they just show an area. They don't show elevation, do they? Yeah, they do. So, I mean, a flood level, level yeah, they do. elevation? Yeah. Because I know, you, I mean, Deerfield's small, but the actual elevation of flood water along the Deerfield River is going to be much higher than along the Connecticut River just because right. of the, you know, the elevation of the both pieces of land. And the 100-year so. flood elevations are going to be significantly higher in yep. this year than they were in 1984 when those maps were made, too. So that's the other I think what you know, issue, Kip is saying, like sea level. Sea level, yeah. Well, yeah. that's what everything's based on, sea level. So. Yeah. Um. Um. Roger, I'd read your thing. They're, all buildings or structures erected or substantially improved within the zone shall be elevated. So it's the ones being erected, not right. already erected. It right. say, yeah, we wouldn't have to go back and raise the whole building. It's that's the new right. part of it. That's I think right. that's what I think that that's so the way I interpret it. If you're adding an addition to your home or business or whatever is permitted in yeah. that thing, and you're, we'll say your first floor is at 100 feet, you know, the sea level. So now they are saying if the flood is at 102 feet, that means that first floor has to be at 102 feet. So you'd be like two feet higher than the main part of your house. Right. So split level. That's right. And, 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 and frankly, you'd have to do that even if the town doesn't adopt this. Why, well, because of flood insurance? Because of the state building code. That states in the flood building code that, that, that you that's have to be two state, feet higher than the, state what the flood plane is. Yeah. So we're just sort of referencing that portion of the state building code to make sure that that gets How wrapped long has that been in the state building code? Quite a while. Like, like 20 years. Well, I asked you this question before, and I, and I talked with Dick Kalaszewski about it. Since Massachusetts doesn't necessarily have a building code anymore, how does that play into it? We, we have a building code. Well, we use the ICC international code, so, state, and that has absolutely nothing to do with that. The, and there, so, there is absolutely a state building code, well, which, I, I know which, that is, there is, which is but based, it's an on, amendment. based on the ICC. The ICC influenced the, dire the direction of the state building code, but the state building code is in the Massachusetts Code of Re Regulations, the CMR, um, and, and it's... Yeah, but it's all, it's all the, the international, the ICC code. It's and based on that. No. If you, go in, if you go to the state bookstore and you say you want a Massachusetts building code, you're going to get an ICC building code book. Well, you can, they you can go amendments. online and, and you can get the state yeah. building code. It's, it's all there uh, online. Um, if, if you look at yeah. it, it they, when they developed the state building code, they, they extensively used the ICC. But there is a state building code, and that's the document that's enforceable in Massachusetts, not, not the ICC specifically. You know, Roger, after all the building down on the Cape, for instance, you see anybody who's building now? They're building with... What did you say, Rachel? Down on the Cape. Um, and I know this is, you know, Bob was 20, whatever, 27, eight years ago. But <clears throat> memories are long and people are building, they build their... The, the people who build back right after Bob are all high up on stilts. Yeah. Some of them bizarrely, like some of them to some code... Mm -hmm. That I have no well, idea. Well, it could be because, like, Florida is that way. You well, Florida, and so you walk, yeah. you drive around, and, you know, the low homes, you know, they're the old ones because everybody else is. Right. And you can't put a bathroom or, you know, you, you've got a lot of restrictions about what you can do right. on that. Well, it can't be living space. I think you can have a bathroom down below, but no living <laughs> space. Yeah, so anyway, I mean, I think that, you know, it's, it, it's beyond um, the, the, the floodplain. What we're doing is coding it in Deerfield, like, you know, for the town, but it's not like, it's, it's increasingly just economically. If you're building, you want to build something that you don't have to rebuild. Well, that's my, would be my mentality, but some people right. don't, don't build in the floodplain in the first place. Right, 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 right. right. 
All right, so we're good with the next step being it comes back to us, and then, um, I, so, yeah, it would be great to be able to pass it around to the different um, ZBA, CONCOM, select yeah. board just uh, before, it, before it would go to town meeting. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. that would be great. Okay, I'll follow up. Anything else? Public, thank you very much for the comments. We will follow up with this. So um, this, this was a public hearing, so can I, uh, so we don't think there's going to be anything substantial so that we can close the public hearing? I do believe so. Do we have a motion? I make a motion to close the public hearing for the proposed zoning changes to the floodplain district. I second that. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Who seconded it? Oh, John did. Six nothing to uh, close the public hearing. Thanks very much, Chris, and we yeah, thank you all. appreciate it. And we got it done before June 30th, which is good. Yeah. Um, some ADA violations. Any other business here. not reasonably anticipated? So I have business that was anticipated. It's been so anticipated. Um, Chris, notice, of, we, notice of decision. Just, can I just, before Chris take, yeah. holds those maps up, I'd like to look at them again. Are you going to take those maps right now? or? I the Board of Assessors, who have the, apparently the only copy in town. I just wanted to look at it. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Right. We can leave them. So we have two decisions on the marijuana establishments that we have not signed yet. And we haven't Which actually, one's that for? We actually haven't completed them. The 198 Mill Village Road and oh. the 10 Greenfield Road. I think the <laughs> Adam has helped us uh, substantially put together the one for 198, and it's been looked over by the um, applicants. And they made a couple comments. So it's coming down to just a couple things. Plus, we got to fill in some of the kind of some of the little background thing, like how many public meetings we had and stuff, public hearings. We and then you, we authorized you months ago to be to sign to <laughs> sign this one. Keep saying you have to sign it so you're the only one that actually needs to sign that. <laughs> well, but we really need with that, that put aside. That was one of the things I'd like to talk about so tonight. Do you realize that entire document is useless? Well, see, I, I do think it's not useless, but I, I, I imagine what you're going to say is that it's already passed because of time. That's right. And, and so the other thing that we should be aware of. Yeah, I yeah. Just want you guys to hear this too, is because because we didn't meet that deadline. Not only they can continue, they can do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. They do not have to comply with any of the conditions that we have. So we have a, an agreement with the 198 Mill Village Road folks that they would rather have the signed. They would rather document the signed decision from us, knowing that they could go around it. Okay. And I think the other people might say the same thing, although we haven't. Have you heard from them lately? Nope. And I just think it's still incumbent on us to just do it. And sure. So your point is taken, but it's also it makes sense to do this. But I'm just saying that, right. you know, we, we have, and, and I'm not saying not to, okay. I'm just saying that we need to understand by not doing this, they can just, you know, do what they choose, oh, you know. Yeah. So if they, I don't remember anything specific, but if they're supposed to put in a drainage thing as one of our conditions and they find out it's too expensive, they don't have to do it. I, I, I agree, but there are certain building code things that we, well, that they have to do. Oh, yeah, if, if we ask definitely. for something beyond what definitely. the standard, yeah, definitely. you're right. Yeah. So, I, I, yeah. so I'm not think, I don't think there's a, a lot of issues with it, but so, um, no. so the question is who wants to, do a little more work on, on these. Well, what exactly is it that you said you wanted me to sign? Well, the last page is what to sign, but the beginning has to be a little bit more, just some names and addresses, and then, like I say, the meetings that we had, you know, this is the kind of thing that Pat Smith always did for us, and the date of all the public hearings. Ideally, um, again, often we had a staff person who helped us with this, but this we've been in this little Hole for a little while. So is that, it takes going back to our minutes, basically. Who, who made these for you? That Adam. Oh, why did he do this? I can't sign that. Oh, sorry. I'd be him. And, and so I can send you the, um, 
Word, you know, they're in yeah. Word documents. Oh, okay. So why don't I send you that and try to try to pull together the minutes and stuff and try to just fill in some of these blanks. I don't. And, and as you said, I don't think we have to be so perfect now. Um, and and like Dick Evans looked over that and he agrees with it. He took out. He did. Actually, when I send it to you, there'll be a few red things and a few crossed out things, and then we can accept the, the changes. But Adam and Dick seem to be in agreement on everything. So. What, well, will you fill in the notice, the date of the notice of the decision? Yeah, I didn't know that. It should be back um, because then on the back it does say by votes of the planning board on March 4th. So we're still using that date as when we voted on it. Okay. And we indicate that here that we voted on it on March 4th. But we have to go and make sure that who was at what meeting so that it carries, you know, so it all works. Um, I mean, I can ask Diana or Priscilla if they have any time to kind of do some of this, but um, it's been lingering. Yeah, ask, if, ask Priscilla if you want, and then if you want to send that to her, I'll just come in and yeah, deal with her. Yeah, because she might be able to just put some of the dates together and okay. stuff like that. So. Okay. All right, so I just wanted everybody to know that's going on. And then, um, all right, I mean, I looked through my notes from that June 12th meeting, and I, I don't remember, but I thought there was something we were supposed to... Um, We, we, well, we're going to have a subcommittee to meet with Adam. Um, he hasn't got back to us about this is about the Dollar General issue. Right. So we're waiting for him to get back to us. Thanks, Chris. We'll see you. I thought we were supposed to have a meeting and have no more than three people. Yeah. Yeah, that's the subcommittee. Yeah. Oh, but before we move on, I will I will contact Deerfield Naturals. That will be my job to make sure I we know where they are so that. We in the same vein, they haven't. They have the 10 Greenfield Road one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're still, yeah, they don't even have their, yeah, their agreement yet, do they? Do you know? I think they, yeah, the, the community host agreement? Yeah, no. I, I do. Yeah, okay. Matter of fact, I, I saw at a select board meeting that they came back, they say changed from uh, LLC to a, an incorporation. Okay. Did I read correctly that the the select board is going to approve medical marijuana retail sales on Mill Village Road. Uh, Where do you and does that, that I just, I read some minutes from a... Uh, well, I mean, what I was talking about before, that's exactly what could happen, you know. Well, that would be a change of use, that and that would come to that for would, a period for a that would, review. Yes. That would have to come to us. I don't right. think so. Because well, it was years. cultivation only with right. our right. discussions. Yeah. Yeah, but it's cultivation, it's residential, and we pass zoning that or something. Yeah, that dispensary's could be not done. even allowed out there. Allowed yeah, dispensary yeah. So would not be allowed. It's commercial yeah. application. We have a um, wow. overlay district for, for retail. Yeah. They use the retail. word establishment, so maybe establishment is the general word for everything. So maybe, so maybe right. that's what you saw. No, I Check thought I, I was reading. You know, minutes for a discussion of the retail. It sales. says retail or dispensary. That's yeah, that's what I thought. Has to be I don't think it's in the allowed there. Plus, it would have to come back for a site plan review or a okay. special permit. Just, so. But it does come into my list. That's a pretty narrow strip. Any other business? And then, um, oh, next meeting. So actually, it's next 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 Monday is our normal, but uh, I don't think we need one. Did we already set a July meeting? This was actually a special one. So did we move up the July meeting till tonight? Maybe that's what we did. No, I don't think we did that. I, I, no, <laughs> I have the first. This the meeting, but that's we did this for Vesh. Well, for the two things. But I Oh, also right, for the flood plan thing. We Maybe. should also, uh, am I the only one that was here for that? Oh, I am the only one that was here for that. Oh, you need I to came at 7 o'clock. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was there. Yes, Roger, let's talk about that. No, I'm just teasing him. It was 9 o'clock. Because he showed up at uh, 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock as we were leaving. It was a three hour meeting. What, the green space thing? Mm -hmm. Should we just report on it? Well, we can, I guess. I didn't oh. know that we we're walking into that. That was like, I thought we were going to talk about floodplain. But it was about incentives to build green 
uh, buildings and stuff. And change and propose changes to bylaws. Did you talk about accessory apartments and stuff? Or? No. Uh, well, to we be touched honest, very briefly. Did on they that. really talk? I, really? I've been to two, a couple of seminars where they talk about green building, and I got to tell you that I don't think the people know what they have a clue well, as to what no, they're we, talking about. Well, it, it wasn't. It, we separated it actually. In the Senate part, we ditched, to be fully honest. Um, or we separated. What was that? The Rachel? incentive part. There were two sections to what? Well, um, the incentive, we. We dropped one whole thing where they were going to allow a non -con like a, a building lot that wasn't conforming. Like, but if you did certain things, you could reduce that requirement by uh, 60 feet. Good. So you would a, a, a lot that wasn't allowed to be built on all of a sudden could be a building lot or a structure could go on it. If you and build it, something green. Yeah, and I said, well, that's being less green, and yeah. so they dropped that instantly. Well. Yeah, that, that, I, well, there and then taller structures and. If anybody uh, wants to, I will. I'm happy to copy it. Yeah, that, and my notes are for not not very constructive. Is it updated from January? Or is it updated six six nineteen, but it w wasn't. There were oh. two sections to it, the, and the incentive part was less interesting. I think that's well, Roger's, Roger's pointing to. Like there, it just was not. Well, but that's the only reason they're doing that. So you would build green. So it's really an important part of it because now you could go above the, the non-pervious stuff if you put on a, uh, what do they call it, uh, a green roof or a blue roof. But that's part of the, that was part of the second part, which was the incentives. Right, but that's what they're, density they're bonus. not saying, density. yeah, but that's density. what they want. They want people to build green, Rachel, and it's going to cost more money. So that's why they're giving the incentives. So it'll entice people to do it because now they can have more impervious areas and stuff. So if you don't give any incentives, why are you going to build green? I totally agree. Totally agree. But in the discussion that we had, the first part was totally different. The first part was to review uh, amendments to site plan review that included things. Oh, yes, yeah, like, site plan review. Yeah. You're right. And it gave us, yeah. that was a totally different, there was, was two really subjects. Two, two subjects. And yes. they were slightly related in that, you know, if you're, you, uh, and if you think of some of the projects that we've worked on recently, you know, concerns about bike paths. No, no. And where bike paths are going or walking The site plan review or, gave us more. Tree inventory, a little more right. specifics about tree inventory. That so. was good. And none of it's, none of it, and that's why tonight when he was talking about. But uh, we should have had. Feasible, like the feasibility clause, that's what was over and over again. We, and there were voices in the room that were looking for that to be removed, but that actually gives. Well, they said about like trees, uh, right. any significant tree, and they gave dimensions of trees. And Ann Mary, were you at that meeting? No, also? no I wasn't well, there. you, me, and uh, Paul. Paul, yeah. But it was good that we were there. And <laughs> it said that that tree wouldn't be removed or whatever, or, you know, well, if you could remove it. You know, and it was but if feasible, if, if feasible, feasible, yeah, if feasible, and it was like again. so that was it was good because I think that's why it was good that we were there because you could get fairly excited about <clears throat> what you would want to make landowners do, and it was important to to keep in perspective what it was that. So is it like our? Don't we have a thing in there about lid on um, yep. low impact development that for <laughs> stormwater or something like? Trying to encourage it, but it's not any. There's well, not any real. That for for uh, for um, development for. Uh, it was cluster. I cluster, brought that right, right, right. cluster we, development. We found, that was the one thing we found. We didn't find one of the things that it, the, it exposed was that we couldn't find our lighting restrictions. In our in our. Current in by our current bylaw. Yeah, they're in there. Talks know, about how I many rooms and them. business. I don't know. I know. What they're, I, I've gone through. If them. you can, if you can. Let's send those along in a way. I found all the signed ones, and I found all, the, and I found the cluster. Yeah, you did. Yeah, but I couldn't find the lighting ones. Because I know we had a moratorium on it, and then I thought we sort of did away with it. But Carolyn said after, if you can't have a moratorium forever, you got to take a town meeting vote to do away with cluster development. Uh, the developer came in and was trying to pull a fast one. It was a three-hour meeting. I'm just saying. All right, so we don't need to make this one a three-hour meeting. No, but Sorry, okay. that, that all that okay. stuff has to be brought up so, to the full board. At some point, we, so need, to, we, yeah. need, to, we so, need to bring this to, and I, I guess I should have asked Chris tonight. 
but it wasn't, it, it, to me, it felt like more, but it also was mostly just asking questions. It wasn't, it wasn't saying, oh, you can only, you have to have a bike path that's five and a half feet wide and excess, you know, in excess of blah, blah, none of that. It just said, if feasible, you can do this. If feasible, you can do that. It was even like with major developments, if you have a uh, impervious sidewalk, they would, you could get benefits from it. I forget what the benefit would be, but maybe they, everything could be closer. They could, it then just, if you created parks in the back. Right, but again, that was back to the incentive. Right. That, that was the second part. The first part was like tree preservation, orientation of building for solar access. So there's no restrictions on orientation for solar access. It just was a provision that we were kind of allowed to ask the applicant, so what are you doing about solar access? Do you have any thoughts on it? Do you have any provision for building your, and then they could say, no, no, <laughs> quite honestly, but it, that's it, to the extent feasible based on lot configuration and size. So to me, it was useful because if, if, if you would go through on a site plan review, you would go through these questions and you would consider them. And I feel like, so that, that's all. That's so what's what we the talked next, about. So what's the next steps? You next step, you know? he's got, um, he's going to take all this into consideration and he was going to revise some of it because some of it was. Revision and we haven't seen Chris. It. Chris. 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 So he's helping to orchestrate this. Yeah. Yes. And yes. Uh, yes. Tim. I can't. He was there and Judy, Judy, and they put a lot of good input into the meeting. Yeah, yeah it was constructive. But this yeah, it's you'd have to have the whole board really to review that stuff. Yeah. But so, just, next question: Do we need to set a date for the next meeting? Well, considering what says the twenty fifth, you want to. We don't have anything uh, pending. Everything that's. Come you into the office. I think we took you. You want to set a uh, meeting date of August fifth? Yeah, second. but I know at one time we talked about doing something with the current, uh, and maybe I don't say we have to do it. You know, the beginning of uh, July, but with uh, accessory apartments. Yeah, accessory apartments was one, and then the where marijuana is allowed to be grown yeah. we saw issues coming up with that and we said we need to do I, something and, so and, and put a what, moratorium on like or do it why don't we do a july 8th meeting and just have on our agenda to talk about you know placement yeah. of marijuana growth place accessory apartments right and you know, hourglass flag i think we should we have one but i don't think july 8th today. i won't might not be Weird here flag well what well, the, no july 8th the, well, maybe not it's the monday second no, that, that, that was fine no, it was fine. But, but it wasn't a flag lot. It's just I, I think that he made a mistake by doing it that way because he's going to get more, charge more property taxes. Well, we need he also might be. To look at solar specs. And we're still on the air. Yes. So I'll, I won't even make a comment on that one. Okay. okay. So the um, we, solar specs. We also wanted to look at that. That's yep. another. So it, we so go I not so much by how much power it puts out, but the size. Of, yeah. I agree. Square footage. Like, yeah. 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 And then and definitions. Now I've got that on my list. And one of the topics that I was thinking about too is, is also, you know, when we had a very large solar project that was totally out of sight out behind John's house, yeah. you know, we didn't get a lot of grief about it. But yet when we had a, a much smaller project that everybody could see or a lot of people could see, it was a lot more problematic. Now, is it discriminatory for us to say if, uh, if a site is, takes up 100 acres but it's not visual, you know, is it more allowable than one well, that is Well, it could be a couple things. It could be because where, what type of land it was getting put right. on. You know, there, those. if you look at those two projects, one was, you know, like rock and one was... Well, I, I should take a picture because there's a place on the way to Rhode Island. I could, there's solar fields, you know, just like what you see in Sunderland, these panels. And right, right. between them, there's space a little bit further. There's like four rolls of strawberries all the way down. <laughs> it's a strawberry Well, the field university the tried doing and that down on River Road to, for the I know, for the under, to incorporate I would like to solar add, fields you know, into agricultural so uses. Yeah, pollinators underneath the solar. I mean, the guy that has a, um, a farm stand next to my building has, you know, solar panels, you know, and he, it's right, he has the panels right up against his access road out to his strawberry fields. So it doesn't really take up a lot of farmland, and he gets a benefit of it. 
Right, it so. depends how the shadows and what you're trying to raise. If it's just grass, you know, mm -hmm. it isn't that big a well, deal. Well, shadows his road, so it doesn't Right. Matter. All right, so All right. I agree. So what's the best date for that then? Because we, we could... July 8th. Is that a good date? Roger's not sure. That's the second well, Monday. That's the second Monday? The first. Uh, I should be fine. Because I was thinking the fourth and... Yeah, no. I don't know. I don't have a calendar in front of me. I don't know how it's it falls. It's the following Monday. Fourth, fourth is, is Thursday. Thursday. Oh. Thursday? Yep. So the eighth? Be a Monday. Monday. Well, that would be, uh, it might not be around. Where will you be? Where will I be? None of your business. <laughs> really? Yeah. Wow. Not, not here. Hmm? You'll be not, not here. Okay. I mean, then, but then. I don't, you can have the meeting. I don't, it doesn't matter to but me. I'm just saying I might not, I might not be here. That's all. But if we, what if we said the 15th? Would you know if you're going to be here then? Probably the I would be. Can we do one more thing too, Roger, that you're here? Um, the CPC, do you want to stay on that? We need to get that. Yeah, I, I do, and I, that was yeah, one of the meetings I wasn't That's, at. Yeah. So could you, we, it, could you say the words, what did C, C, C? It's Community Preservation Committee. Yeah, so I good. knew it. So good. Well, I thought there was also the Capital, Capital Planning Committee, and I was like, which is C they both the same initials? On that, I guess. Capital improvement, CI. All right, that's capital. All right, was capital planning. All right, so Rogers, our person, can we? And there was a, and I'll bring that, that up yeah. that's an because at one point, yeah. our board appoints those people to be on it, and I'm going to say, last year or two years ago, the selectmen said they had the authority to put whoever they wanted on from our board. No. On Yes, they did, Kip, because uh, I was on it, and they uh, picked Rachel. Uh, right, no, no. because... I think that was confusing. The, the select board picked Rachel from the select board. For them. From the select board. Yeah. We picked you for the planning board. Right. Not for the capital improvement. Not for capital improvement. What was it that we did? That's right. That's for a CPC. CPA. I'm on the CPC. Is it's the same thing. Same thing. No. CPA is the... Is the that's the... But aren't you on the capital improvement? Yes. Yeah. And they, the select board appointed you to that. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And they don't have the authority to do that. No. Yes, we do. What we're saying is they, 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 they appoint, I don't think they do. They have, we can appoint one from our board, yes. We can appoint anybody. Just like right. this board can appoint anybody right. like you. Right, but you appointed her as a private person, not right. a planning not board planning reverend. Board. Right, right. Yeah, that's, so that's why you're But that didn't, didn't happen, Kip, I'm telling you. I know it didn't happen. Okay because I spoke the truth and they didn't like it. So does anybody else have, does it matter 8th or 15th for anybody else? Doesn't matter to me. All right, let's do the 15th then. Okay. Paul's, so, a lot of Mondays I think he can make it. So. All right, next meeting is July, uh, next meeting in the planning board, July 15th, seven o'clock here in the town offices and we're gonna discuss uh, potential changes to bylaws, just an introductory, yeah, not a public hearing. Okay, seven. At 7 o'clock. At 7 o'clock. Yeah. Thank you. Is there a motion to adjourn? Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So adjourned. <laughs>